I think the first thing to do before we get into some st strategy and tactics is ask the question, why do you even want to do that? Right? Because I think that's a really important question. I think oftentimes we get caught uh, in entrepreneurial world and business world is that we need to scale, we need to double, we need to do this. And the question needs to be asked is why? Because if you don't know your why, then what's the point? Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast, episode 20, coming at you with Angus, but we're also from interviewing Dr. Lawrence Tam from Drive Your Practice. Great interview here where we talk about future-proofing your practice, how in five years you're still ahead of the game, but it's what you do right now. And we go through the three most important things or strategies that you need to be doing in your practice to future-proof it. Mm. Uh, we also talk a lot about video and what you should be doing, what you well, really, shouldn't be doing. This is a discussion really around personal branding. Yeah. So not branding like, you know, what does my logo look like? You know, what's my domain? But really, Lawrence talks about how the future-proof practice is all really built around the personality of you. So he talks about how to personally brand. That's where video mm. came in. So you'll learn about what videos Lawrence thinks you should make and then what videos you shouldn't make, the ones that will literally pull credibility away from you also. So his three-step system is, is brilliant to bring your practice. You know, maybe you haven't done anything over the last decade or maybe you're looking forward to, you know, how do I go about guaranteeing that I'm still... Uh, you know, my practice, people are aware of it as we kind of move mm. forwards as well. So future-proofing your practice. I loved what Lawrence had to say, his, you know, his strategies, tactics. And then again, you know, why do we want to future-proof our practice uh, to begin with? Uh, he mm. had a great answer for that as well. So Stick around. He goes a million miles an hour. He covers <laughs> a lot of territory, so stick with it. And uh, here's Lawrence Tam. Okay. See you soon. Lawrence Tam, welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. Great to see you. It's great to be here, guys. Uh, excited to be here and just sharing some uh, knowledge with you guys. Yeah, and uh, for, the, for the listeners that uh, don't know Lawrence, uh, you know, probably not many of you because you've probably seen him everywhere. You are someone who's been ahead of the game for a long time now, Lawrence, both in practice, then taking a step out in your coaching. Uh, it's, it's been wonderful to watch your journey. We've been lucky enough to uh, share your knowledge with our group numerous times, um, but really, really excited to dive into this topic today about not just making sure that we are ahead of the game in our own practices, um, but also if, if we wanted to have a, a massive goal of doubling our practice, I want to dive into what you would see as the keys, uh, the strategies, some tactics of how we'd actually go about doing that. So really excited to dive in. Uh, I really don't know where to start, but uh, jump on in. <laughs> All right, let's let's start with this. Uh, I think doubling your practice is a, a great audacious goal, and, I, and and you frame that properly. I think the first thing to do before we get into some st strategy and tactics is ask the question, why do you even want to do that, mm -hmm. right? Because I think that's a really important question. I think oftentimes we get caught uh, in entrepreneurial world and business world is that we need to scale, we need to double, we need to do this. And the question needs to be asked is why? Because if you don't know your why, then what's the point? Because otherwise, you're doing it and you're pushing uphill and you're pushing, 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 and it actually destroys your family, destroys your life, destroys like your, your adrenals are burned out. And it's, it, it's not a happy sight because I've seen people who scale, done well, go to these practices, but then they just leave a wake of destruction behind them. And that's not necessarily what we want, right? Ultimately, I think as chiropractors, what we want to do is, you know, two or three things. Number one is you want to be happy. Ultimately, like let's, let's face it, we want to be ultimately happy. So mm -hmm. will doubling your practice make you happy? And if the answer is yes, awesome. Let's talk about strategies and tactics. But if it's not going to make you happy, then let's figure out what's going to make you happy. Okay, would it be 30%? Maybe it's like scaling down. It might be like pulling yourself away. So I think it's really important to ask that question, fundamental question, just to kind of set that pre-frame. The second thing I think as a chiropractor, what we want to do is ultimately help people, right? We want to help our community. And so what's the driving force behind that? And will this will this doubling your practice or whatever goal you actually have for, is that gonna help you achieve that? So I think that's probably the best framework I wanna put around this before we actually get into any strategy and tactics. Would there be inside that, um, you know, why do I wanna do it? What if I say, yeah, man, of course I wanna do it because I'll earn double the income. Like, is that a good enough reason to do it? Is there some warning flags that should kind of pop up when that sort of happens there too? What, what's a good enough yeah. reason 
other than happiness. Um, Earning money is never going to give you the happiness that you want, I, I, in my opinion, because what I think is that we, we think money will bring us. But ultimately, what we do, of course, we want more money. That's not, of course, that's, I get that's one part. But doubling your practice means takes, it takes a lot of work and takes a lot of maintaining. It's not even just growing the number, right? That's, that's one perspective. The second perspective we need to do is how are you going to maintain that? Right. There's no point going from 100 to 200 and then go back to 100. Like that's not satisfying. Right. It's going to 100 to 200 and then maintaining that. Do you have the energy and the passion and the willingness to continue to maintain that? Because what I've seen a lot of chiropractors do is they used to see 200, 300, 400, and now they're seeing 100, 200, and now they're depressed. Right. That's not good because now they have this relative point. I used to see this, but I haven't. And I go, OK, when did you see it? Ten years ago. Well, like, stop comparing yourself from 10 years ago because that has that sale that's come and gone and it's changed now. So I think earning more money is not a good enough reason. Personally, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, what I think it needs to do is like, what's the purpose for you? Because I am personally sick and tired of 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 just trying to achieve something of someone else's opinion on what they need to achieve. Because just because a speaker says this is what I see and this is what you know what I expect you to see, I think that's wrong because all of us have different lives. My biggest thing is about align, align and amplify, which means that you need to align your practice based on who you are, not what anybody else is. Stop trying to copy someone else. Try to be with, try to be you. Make sure that your practice is aligned to who you want, are and who you want to be. And then you can amplify that message. Otherwise, you're amplifying a message out there that people don't resonate. Because we know, I mean, colleagues of are, are we know uh, colleagues and chiropractors that are constantly building a practice, but it's not who they really are. And what happens is that they're attracting all these people that they don't even want to see. And that leads to burnout. Sure, they might be successful for three years, five years, or whatever, but sooner or later, they're going to get sick and tired, and then that leads to burnout. And that's not what we want, because our profession... Um, grows and continues to uh, strive when chiropractors are happy and passionate about what they're doing and they're successful. It doesn't matter about the number. What matters more is are they striving to be better in their profession because the profession needs a base of amazing chiropractors serving and loving what they're doing. Lawrence, this, this really fascinates me because I think it's often the answers that a lot of people don't want to hear but they need to hear and it's the work they don't want to do yet need to do when you say let's build the practice from a place of being who you are how do we how do we know or how do we find that expression because there's lots of different ways that we all practice there's lots of different people that we are how do we get that blend right so that i know that my practice is a reflection of who i am I think one of the it's it's trial and error, but the thing is, I think it's really where we're coming to. You can start to see it in sort of in social media at the moment. Is that what we're trying to what chiropractors do is fall in love with tactics, right? They fall in love with like what's the next idea? Let's do Facebook marketing, let's do video marketing, let's do Instagram marketing, let's do and they're looking for tactics. Tactics don't solve problems. They give you an instant hit. It's like you know giving it's like a drug that gives you a small a small little little bit, but it's not sustainable. What needs to is that if you're going to let's think about it. most chiropractors are in this game for the long run right they're not in it for like two years they're in this for like they want to practice until they die right and if you're going to do that you need to constantly because we're talking about future proofing right if you want to proof your practice then it has to be in a position where you're going to constantly thrive and it continues to excite you otherwise you're going to have a practice that is not like you so going back to your original question which is how do you find a practice that's along who you are. Well, you're gonna have to be totally self-aware of what you're about. I think oftentimes, I know I've fallen guilty of this, is that I listen to all these noise of all these people telling me what a solicitation-based chiropractor is or what a principle-based chiropractor is or what a philosophy I should adopt. And it took me many years to go, to stop, to stop and actually think and going, wait a second, is that what I believe? Or is that what someone else told me to believe? You know, I'm guilty of this as well. Like, and so where I've, you know, as a speaker, it's very challenging to kind of give a message off, but not to say, this is, this is my belief. You know, I've never given any of my clients a script because that script, there's no script because that the way I communicate is the way I communicate it. Don't be me, be you. You know, oftentimes a simple way of doing this is, um, I remember one client of mine, when the very first call I said, asked her was, 
to to get aligned with herself was looked at I looked at her pictures in her wall and I go are any of those she loved scuba diving for example like she loves scuba diving and she loves taking pictures I go any pictures you have ever taken on scuba diving underwater has any of that picture in in your practice she goes no I goes why not he goes uh I don't know I'm like what if you just took one of those pictures as I was talking to her on a coaching and she had it in the background, go, what if you took one of those pictures and put it on your wall? And she did that. And all of a sudden, like, honestly, this is, it's so stupid, right? Like, this is not a tactic. But within six weeks, like, her practice grew like 20%. Now, did the picture do that? No, it didn't. What it did was it reminded her of going, this is what I'm about, right? And this, I think we forget about showing that side of us. Like, you'll see a whole bunch of things in the background. Like, this stuff doesn't matter to anybody else but me. This is my office. This is my den. This is my lair, right? And it's not because I love sports or anything. It's because these people are behind me and the people you see around all these pictures around me, they're the ones who inspire me because they're, they're, I'm surrounded by greatness every time I walk into this room, whether it be Lou Gehrig, whether it be Muhammad Ali, whether it's Joe Montana. Those are people that remind me going, I'm striving for greatness. That's that's for me. That's what I strive for. Now, whatever makes you tick in your practice, you need to kind of put some personal element into your practice because I don't think practices need to look the same. I think practices need to look of what feels you like you, just like your home. The furniture you choose, the pictures you put on your wall, the colors, the scheme, the, the modernism or like maybe country style home, you choose that home because of what you like. Do that in your practice. And so I guess that also brings comes uh, from our techniques, you know, what we the services we're offering. Do they resonate with us? As you said, do they get us excited? Is or have we just adopted a bastardized version of some technique? And what we really want to be doing is pure talk release or whatever it may be. Uh, I guess that's part of it as well. Well, yeah, because when I mean, you think about this, when, when I said align and amplify, so first of all is alignment, right? So you got to be aligned. When your practice is aligned, then now we, ha- we, we are vibrating in a certain frequency. Now we can amplify that message. So whether that be through video, through podcast, through audio, or your writing, or your website, now you're amplifying a message. And when you amplify the message, guess what? You're going to vibrate at a certain frequency. And your, the people that hear your, who see you or hear you or feel you, all of a sudden they're either with the same resonance or the same frequency as you, or they're not. And if they are, they will hear you and they're gonna come to you. And those people who are not, they won't even see you. They'll ignore you, they didn't even know you existed. So it's like, if you love Guns N' Roses, like then those people who love hip hop, they're not coming to you, right? Cause they don't even notice you, right? If you love Justin Bieber, then yeah, Guns N' Roses fans are not coming to you, right? Could so it's just, you. it's it's like that resonance. It's So we have to be very clear that the frequency you put out there, what you amplify starts with the alignment first. And you have to be clear on who you are who you are, and who you're about. Now, here's the, here's the, the, the thing that I want you to remind everybody is you can change. You're going to evolve, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I remember a client of mine where, where, you know, at first he loved seeing kids and seeing families, you know, and uh, that's what he thought his tr- niche was. And, you know, 15 years later, right, his kids are growing up. They're teenagers now. And I, you know, one of the things that we talked about was it's like, you know what? I realized that I don't like, like adjusting kids anymore because his kids are growing up. He wants to adjust teenagers, you know, you know, the kids that are his kid's age. We evolve and it's okay. Just because you started off as a pediatric chiropractic doesn't mean that you don't, can't evolve and become chiropractors only. It's okay to change, and that's what we need to adjust. Like, you know, one of the things that we, we do, we need to adjust to the times. And this is what we're going to be talking about is the future proofing is that we need to look at what's happening within ourselves, and we also need to see what's happening in the marketplace, and we need to learn to adjust. Otherwise, we cannot be able to future proof ourselves if we don't do that. Okay. So, we've uh, decided, yep, we're going to double our practice. I'm aligned, I've got space for that in all areas of my life physically, mentally, emotionally. And I'm ready to step in that. So I'm guessing, you know, this is the amplification phase of which you touched yep. on a couple of bits and pieces beforehand. So where do I, where do I begin that journey? Uh, is it time now for strategies and tactics, or is it time that I came back a little bit further and continued to kind of work on other otherwise that I'm ignoring? I think personally, it's it's about a bit of both. Like first of all, once you're clear on who you are, that constantly needs to be. Um, you gotta have a pulse on that all the time because 
you're changing, you're evolving, and we kind of mentioned that around. And you need to kind of look into yourself and how am I developing? So if we're going to go with strategy and tactics and how to double my practice, first of all, I believe my, this is my fundamental mindset. There's not necessarily everybody agrees on this, but my, my feeling is that for chiropractors to, th to thrive in the future is thriving on personal brand which means that you need to create the personal brand that you decide. Now, this goes against the um, theory of building franchise practices, okay? And I understand, but I believe the future of practices, in order to thrive, is that they need to create a personal brand within yourself because people come, you know, we're, we're chiropractors. People come because of us, like hands-on, right? They come for personality. Now, we don't like that because it's harder to scale, but my belief, the best way to scale fast is on personal brand. They come because of you, your brand and what you bring to the picture. This is why the alignment is so critical. And so when you can do that, when you create a personal brand, so you want to double your practice, it's about leaning on your brand, leaning on who you are, what you're about and what you want to say to the world and people are going to be attracted to that. So what that means though, right, for a lot of people, this is this is gonna suck for them, is that you're gonna have to do a lot of work to create that personal brand because no longer is a logo. It's not a freaking logo. Personal brand is not a logo, okay? A logo is a shortcut to what you represent. Right? When you think about Nike, you see swoosh. We recognize that it's Nike, but when you see Nike, it's not, you don't think Nike. You think about, if you close your eyes and thought Nike, the first thing you think about is greatness, you know, athleticism, you, all of that comes flashing into you, right? Programs, of course, and then spend billions of marketing dollars on that, but they've created that. So the brand that you have is a shortcut to everything that you represent. So if you have nothing to represent, then I don't care how great your logo is, it doesn't mean anything. So does, it, does that bring up the issue of, um, you know, what we stand for or what we stand against and that we need to be getting these messages out to our target audience? Yeah, so your personal brand is going to align on what you stand for. There's got to be a line to drawing what you're about, who, you, who you're who you trying to attract, what do you stand for, what do you stand against, what you don't stand for. Uh, like in terms of like there's got to be a line and people need to know what you're about, you know. And chiropractic, we can slice and dice so many different things, but you're, it's not about chiropractors. We get so focused on trying to figure out and get caught up on what other chiropractors think of us. They don't, who cares? Like, does it really matter what your colleagues think of you across the other country or across the road? What matters more is your constituents who are the patients that come to you. This is why I, I focus on personal brand because we could all be in the same corner, right, on the on a major intersection, and I guarantee we're going to attract different clients. Why? Because personally, we're all different. We're all raised differently. We all have different background. We all have different experiences. We all have different interests at the same time. And when you do that, you're going to attract those people that come to you. This is true for hundreds of years, 123 years, it's been like this, right? People who are attracted to BJ will go to BJ. People who go to DD will go to DD, right? So people who are attracted to mechanistic carpet are gonna be mechanistic carpet. It doesn't matter, it's not even about philosophy because there's a lot of people who are non-philosophical chiropractors are still attracting great patients. Why? Because they know what they stand for and patients are flooding to them, you know? So it's, it's really being clear on what you're about and people can see it, people can feel it, whether you're incongruent with yourself. So what, what sort of mediums should we be using to build this personal brand? And can you give me an example of maybe what that might look like? You know, what are some of the things that perhaps some of your coaching clients have done in the past? Yeah, so a lot of things that we'll be leaning on, we're changing every single year. So uh, the way the content I taught, you know, three years ago, or even two years ago, have evolved and changed, and it will continue to change. You know, what we're doing in 2018, um, we already have plans for 2019 on how that's going to evolve and change. You know, currently what's happening in the moment, and most people won't like this at all, especially the older chiropractors. And the reason why the older chiropractors don't like it is because you need to change, right, <laughs> which is hard them because they've been doing things for the same thing for the last 10 years or 20 years and they don't want to change because they like we like what we are used to but here's the thing the market doesn't care right the market the 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 the, the people the, the people that in your community they don't care about whether you like to change or not i'm sure we do we love to go back to the days when everything was fine we didn't have all these app or restrictions and all that yeah of course we do but then we're also on dial up internet or the days of before the internet, right? So we're in the days of internet and it's moving fast and things are changing quicker and faster. So what that means is right now to create a personal brand, it's harder. Why? Because there's too much noise. There's so much noise out there, not just in chiropractic, but just not even just in healthcare, but just in the world. You know, 
you post up something today on Facebook, guess what happens? It's gone the next five minutes, right? People would have forgotten about you. So we're so worried about perfecting our video, like right now, people would have forgotten about that video five minutes later because they're on to another video, so which means that you need to have not, not necessarily focus on necessarily quality, but quality and quantity of putting your image out there. If you're if you're not putting enough content out there, people are not going to watch you. You're going to be forgotten, and you 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 know you might have a little burst, but it's not going to happen. So you need to have that constant feed. So what's the what? What do we need to do? Well, first of all, personal brand. I think video is huge right now. Moving forward, video needs to be number one key strategy for you uh, on every platform that's available, whether it be on Facebook, on YouTube, um, and Instagram. Instagram TV just came out uh, not too long ago, which means that you know you got to put your videos out there and. and consumption uh, mass production wise to get your message out there because that's the only way to get to people's attention is that you know what you're talking about not just one video like i'm talking multiple videos like for me right now i'm popping about three to four videos per week now that's original content now we're going to take those original content and then and then strip it down to smaller content so i'm doing a facebook live for like six minutes to ten minutes and i'm going to strip it down to like two to three minutes so it's condensed into a different format. So you're multiplying that one pillar content to creating more multiple contents from that too. So video is huge, right? That's number one thing. Video though, there's also like what you guys are doing, which is both video and audio podcasting. That's another channel. When I did the wellness guys, that's one of the one of the another channels of being able to distribution. But you're also competing with all these other voices, right? So but audio is going to be important. Written word is one of those things that we don't see. People still read their emails. Email is still a massive distribution, especially for your clientele. If you create content that matters, if you're creating content like from emails that are just pushing information on people, they don't care. What you want to do is create content that is sexy, that people want to hear, that it's going to be relevant to them, that matters to them, that's going to be interesting. Them. So you really need to know your clientele. You need to be very clear on how you can benefit them and in their lives and how they how to move them forward. Mm -hmm. So on, on, on personal brand a bit more, Lawrence, have you seen some people just make tragic mistakes about personal brand putting themselves out in the wrong wrong manner? Apart from obviously being incongruent, uh, but assuming we've got the alignment right, are there ways that? Yeah, we can do it I wrong? think. Yeah, I think when you try, a lot of times I see a lot of people start doing videos. So they hear, people hear me, hear me go, you got to do videos. Yes, you need to do videos. And the problem is that they either don't take action on videos because they're too scared to do our videos because, you know, for whatever fear they have in their own head. Or second of all, they just pump out really bad videos. <laughs> so um, when you pump out really bad videos, it does, it, it actually tracks uh, from people from actually wanting to be with you. So instead of attracting to you, they're actually kind of running away from you so it's finding that happy medium uh to try to figure out what so yes there is pers bad personal branding i think if you are trying to be someone else and that you're not if you're trying to be um let's let's try let, let's pull up someone we know maybe like billy demoss right just billy demoss swears and he's all passionate about whatever and you try to pull that off because you think oh that must work well I can never pull off Billy DeMoss even if I tried, right? I can maybe do it for like a two minute skit or something, but that is about it, right? Because he's probably said more F-bombs in like five minutes than I've probably had in my whole entire life, right? You so it's, I just won't be able to pull that off. Yeah, it, it just wouldn't it just wouldn't work. So if you try to be, emulate another chiropractic speaker or another chiropractor, you, you admire. It doesn't mean you can't admire them. It just means that you need to go, what are they really doing? Like you got to look at someone, go, what are they doing and how are they doing that and how do I lean myself towards that kind of strategy. So it becomes more strategic rather than tactic. Tactic is like doing exactly the same thing where strategy is like, let's think about this. How we, what are we trying to do here? What's our objective? Because like I said before, we lean too much on tactic. Tactic, we need to be clear on the strategy first, but what do you strategy is let's be very clear on the objective. Objective comes first, then strategy, then tactic. So along with perhaps trying to be somebody else, what else makes a bad video? How else are people mucking them up? So I'm pretending to be Tony or Billy DeMoss or whatnot. When you're saying, you know, they're okay. doing bad videos, what, what else ruins a video? Yeah, there's so many things that we do to video. Uh, I think one, uh, first thing that comes to my mind is uh, creating bad content. Content is king. Like you, when we push our ideals or ideology on people, people will get turned off. 
like you're pushing people away. So it's about uh, videos should be about helping them, helping the community. They don't care about, to be honest, they don't care about chiropractic. Like no one watches chiropractic videos, cares about chiropractic, but we do, right? Because we're chiropractors, but your public, your patients don't go around and I can't wait to put the next chiropractic video that's gonna make me better, right? What they care about is them. So you need to think creating content that matters to help them move forward. That's what marketing is about. This is what personal branding is about. Personal branding is marketing. Marketing is educating someone through a process to help them uh, move them forward, educate them forward to a better buying decision, right? So if, you're, if your videos are mostly about educating someone rather than selling, which is pushing our ideas on people, that's not marketing, that's just selling. Marketing should be more about educating people. If your videos are constantly selling on someone, here, come take this offer, do this offer, people are gonna maybe watch that once and they'll get turned off and they'll see you again and like, oh, that's the guy who constantly sells me and I don't want it. No one, you, just think about how you're being presented and how you're marketed to and what you don't like, don't do that, right? And you look at people who are constantly giving you giving you content, free content that's gonna help you make you better, whether you buy from them or not, that you would actually won't be interested because now you're positioning yourself as the authority, you're positioning as someone who cares, you position that, hey, this person knows something that maybe if he's giving away this much information, I wonder what it would be like to have access. Because information, by the way, when I say content, it's not information. Information is dead. I have a Google Home at home, I can just go, okay, Google, and it will give me anything I need, right? So your secret information is not secret anymore. Everybody has the access to all the information you have. So your, no, your secret sauce really comes down to is access, right? You're the only person who can adjust me the way you do. You got special hands, you got special knowledge to take that and be able to apply that. You become more the interpreter, right? Not the information. Because if you just have a whole bunch of information which everybody has access to, I guarantee you, your patients probably know more about their problems than you do. Right, because they have researched everything about that particular, you know, condition they have, symptoms, and they know exactly what it is. Your special skills is not about information. Your special skill is being able to take all of the information out there and go apply it to them specifically, and be able to interpret that and how I can help you specifically by you having access to me. Mm. Wisdom. Uh, I love it, Lawrence. I love it. So we've got video. That's certainly something that everyone should be doing to future proof and to help spread your message um, and to amplify your message. What else do we need to do? What else is another strategy? Yeah, you know, I think um, I think what we need to do is actually being able to uh, not spit information out there. What I think, what, going back to the last point I was saying, I think what you need to do is take that information and and make it applicable to to the to to your audience in the way that they think it's about them. So when you work, when you do a video, we'll go back to a video for a second. Um, instead of looking at yourself, look at the camera. There's a difference, right? When you look at a screen, you know, there's the screen, but there's the camera, right? So look at the camera because that's what you're looking at. You don't want to look at yourself because that's what we get caught up on. And therefore, you lose connection. When you're looking at them, then all of a sudden we have eye to eye contact, right? Just like now. But if I look away, I'm looking at, you know, Angus over here, you're going to see like I'm disconnected with you. So when you're giving away videos, make sure you're looking at the camera because that's where everybody's watching, right? Right here, right? Right in that one little spot. And so what that little small little connection piece is really important. So that's from a physical point of view. But when you come to content, make sure the content is to that person you're trying to talk to. Don't talk to everybody, try to talk to one person. What does that one person need? If I'm talking about pregnancy, let's talk to a pregnant mom. Just imagine a pregnant mom and let's, how do I help make this information relevant to this one person? So you wanna talk about other things about video. Well, I think personal branding wise is making sure that you act accordingly. So if what I mean by personal branding is that if you're on video this way, certain way, be this way constantly. So this is what I mean by don't be someone else because if you don't, if you have a, a if you're on video and you're like, oh, like I'm rah, rah, I'm like, oh, and, and then but in your practice when they meet you, you're like, oh, you know, you're kind of a more of a low key kind of guy, they're gonna be disconnected. It's funny, I actually met um, someone today uh, for the very first time and she goes, you look exactly like on 
on your website. And I'm like, I probably should. <laughs> like, I'm not like that's just because it's a professional photo or whatever. Like, it shouldn't be a disconnect. I've seen some photos like you put up the photo that's from 10 years ago. Like you might have had hair back then and you don't have hair now. Like, that's not a good um, a personal brand because they, they need to recognize you as a person. So make sure your your website, um, your, you know, your videos, your website and all the things that you use from an image perspective matches to the person you are now. I think that's really important. Don't use photos that are beyond two years old, because if you use photos beyond two years old, it, it just starts to, it just looks bad on you because you go, oh, that was your best picture and that was five years ago. And that's not a good thing from a personal brand, brand perspective. From a brand thing, I think you need to evolve. I think you need to change. And I think it's okay to change. Um, you know, people who renovate their practices, for example, they renovate their practice thinking, oh, this is the best practice or this is the best website. And then they, they touch it for like five years or 10 years. And that, I think that's a problem because things are changing so fast, people expect change. People expect that you're constantly evolving. Even the big companies are changing, but you're not a big company. You know, big company, you know, they, they take a long time to kind of change their logos or whatever, but you are, are a small business can adapt like that. You can print up a new logo like that. You can change, you know, your your the way your signage like that. You know, I, I remember seeing a question on a forum yesterday. It goes, oh, what kind of chiropractic images you know, that you posters you put put up on your walls? Guys, honestly, I, like, I'm creating posters once a month, like four different posters for clients every single month for them to print because it's that easy now. It's not like back in the day where you have to specially design. Like, honestly, like, it's just the posters and design should be changed constantly, not, you know, every four years. Right. If you're still using the same posters, like why? Why are you? Why don't you just go hire a designer for like you know 100, 200 bucks or something and just create your own thing? You know why do we need to constantly use old brochures? You can create them all. so cheap now, and technology has created that, and you can actually go to OfficeWorks and get that printed tomorrow if you wanted to. So from that, from a personal brand, I think those all of those things need to be congruent back to your central core, which is you. For um for a lot of the the audience, Lawrence, uh, obviously we talked a little bit before. There's the technology kind of overwhelm of them getting started, but for yep. lots of us too, there's the almost the time overwhelm. It's like, oh man, uh, kids are gonna look after practice, gotta run, and now I'm making a video. And Lawrence is making three a week. I gotta design some posters. Like, how do we how do we manage the time in around it? Is it outsourcing? Does it not take as long as what you know we think it it, it does? You know, how do we how do we do that? Uh, you can outsource. It just takes time. <laughs> like there's no like I wish there was like a magic button we can just go outsource, press someone. Yes, of course certain things you can outsource, but you can't outsource you. Right? You can't outsource you who are who's I believe is the is the pillar. So we can outsource a social media company to do all your posts. But you and I both know you're wasting your money because people know that's not coming from you. Yeah. Right? Every post that you see from me, every written word or video comes from me directly. It's in my voice, it's not from someone else. I'm not sharing someone else's video, right? But most of, all the time, like 99% of the time, it's coming from me. No, my staff doesn't write my emails, I write the emails. All the videos are done by me. Sure, now do I have people slice and dice and edit and cut it and all this stuff? Yes, okay, of course. You wanna try to be efficient in those manners. But there's no way to shortcut this. Like, if you want a personal brand, you can't hire someone else to do it for you unless you have a lot of money behind you. You have like, but it's still it's still you, which is time is your asset. And some of you listening to this or watching this, well, I know you're going. That's hard. I get it. That's fine. But just please don't complain about that. This other chiropractor is doing so much and they're getting more clients than you, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what it's about. Because it's not what you're going to do this year. I worry about you. What's going to happen in five years' time? Mm. right if you don't know how to do videos now what's going to happen to you in five years right do you think the market hasn't shifted sure you know like you i remember i remember doing this talk at dg like this is going probably seven eight maybe even ten years ago when i said that we need to start worrying about how we communicate chiropractic and i said this is back in the day of twitter and you know short form and so we need to communicate chiropractic in 140 characters right that's i remember, I remember saying that on stage and this is going way back and people are like, yeah, yeah, it's funny. But you know what? Those kids that were on Twitter are now in their 20s, right? They are now working and they have money and communicating differently. If you didn't know how those kids are communicating, I'm watching my kids going, man, they're 10 and seven at the 
when I'm going, I'm watching them, how they're communicating and consuming information. Cause I guarantee you in 10 years time, my daughter's gonna be 20 years old, which means she's going to be, you know, she's going to be heading into the world and she's going to be paying for things on her own. And all of a sudden now she's going to be the one who's going to be driving the force. And if you don't know how to communicate to that in 10 years time on chiropractic, there's no hope for this profession. So it's going to take work. You're going to need to spend some time on actually understanding these platforms. You don't need to understand all of them. You just need to understand the major ones that's currently happening right now, mm -hmm. which is Facebook and Instagram, right? And YouTube. Those are the three main platforms I think everybody should be on at the moment, all right? At least Facebook. If you if you pick one, pick Facebook and Instagram. I think those two are moving forward. Now, you got to watch the trend, though, because that could change in two years' time, right? Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to put ads on. You don't need to market that way. You just need to understand the platform. Even if you're not on it, you just understand why do people go on it, where are moving towards, what are they consuming, and why do they consume? Look at your own personal behavior. What ads are you attracted to? What makes you stop and look at something? What makes you click? Because I guarantee you, so some of those same psychologies that you're, the companies are working on you are going to be the same psychology that you know that will work on others. Okay, so that's sort of where I think. So yes, it's going to be freaking time consuming, and the reason why it's tough is because you didn't do it five years ago. Yeah. So are we talking? That's what it is, right? Yeah. Are we talking? Is it an hour a week? Is it two hours a week? You know, what should I, if I'm committed to this process, future-proofing yep. my practice and, you know, heading towards that objective of doubling my practice, what would you suggest that would be fair and reasonable for me to kind of invest time-wise in, in helping that, me, me to move forward to that goal? Okay, so personally, I think what we need to do is look at your like, look at your week and go, what are you actually doing? If you want to double your practice, most people who need to double their practice typically are not 100% full. So which means that if you are working 30 hours a week in adjusting time, like if you just look at you purely from your adjusting point of view, how many hours are you actually in office? Mm -hmm. And how many, if you, if you calculate how many, what is the maximum capacity of your office? I guarantee you, you're not at 100%. Mm. If you're not at 100%, say you're at 70%, even, which is pretty high, what are you doing with the 30% of your time? Are you on Facebook? Are you reading a book or whatever? You, what are you doing? And if, what is, you could, you're already there anyways. You're committed to being there. So take that 30%, which is a lot of hours, the 30 hours, that's hour, like, that's, that's a lot. Actually, that's, what, that's more than three hours. hours. It's nine hours. Right? Yeah, nine to 10 hours there. So what are you doing with that 10 hours? You, that you could be going on Google, like just like everybody else, how to do a video or how to post a you know Facebook post. How, and every 10 hours a week, that's 50 hours, right? 500 hours, or you know, I think that's a lot of time over a span of a couple of years to learn down on one particular skill. How long does it take you to do a video? Like I'm not suggesting you need to, like at the beginning, of course, you're gonna, it's gonna be a, uh, like anything else. It's like us palpating for the very first time. I still remember the very first time I ever palpated the spine. It's like, oh my God, I cannot even find the spinous process, right? How long did it take you to find the spinous process? It's like, oh, and I'm supposed to find the TVP on that? And, and you, you're, you're like, how am I ever going to do this? But somehow you did, right? You Somehow you figured it out. And that took years to get there. Well, guess what? If you don't start on videos now, when are you going to start? If you, every hour, every week or every month you wait, it's going to be that much harder because you're getting that much older. And guess what, technology is changing that much faster. So my encourage all clients right now is like they need to double down on video. And right now, because not to say that video may change, the game might change, but I guarantee you, if my clients are doing two videos a week and you decide to do one, there'll be 52 videos ahead of you in a year, mm. all right? And in two years, there are 100 videos ahead of you. And that's assuming you continue your one video a week. Mm. So. You're only going to get better because you start start it today. You're only going to get better if you start practicing it. And sure, then once you start and get going, then you can figure out how do I get this faster? How do I do this faster? So you asked Angus, uh, one of the things you asked was how do you know short time shorten my time? Well, listen, at the beginning when I used to do um, videos, I used to have to like think about it. I need to kind of um, you know craft out a, a story and all that stuff. Even when I used to do podcasts, I need to figure out exactly what I was going to say. Today, you know. The, Nick, I mean, I didn't come prepared because I didn't know what the conversation was going to go other than the topic. So we're going to go with this because why? Because I've been doing podcasting for like seven years now, right? And video wise, the same thing. Like I do Facebook lives now. Why? Because it's easier. I press record. I'm done. And I'm, I'm, it's ended and it's finished. I'm published. I'm gone. I'm finished. Right. And that takes me, you know, whatever, five minutes or 10 minutes. Now that took me 10 years to get here. 
I'm not suggesting you go and do Facebook Live right off the bat. Facebook Live is a very hard medium to play, by the way. My suggestion, if you've never done videos, please do Facebook Live. It is, it's really hard. Hard because it's live, you're you're petrified, you got all these freaking numbers, you're worried about people whether they're showing up or not and people commenting, like you're gonna get lost. Let's just keep the, the constraint tight, which is you shoot, you you do record. Even if you did 10 videos the next say five weeks and never post a single one, it's better better than someone who didn't even start. Getting started. Absolutely. Done is better than perfect is a, a motto that we use here at Adio Media. Um, as long as that done is, uh, as you said, you know, when you're putting out crap, uh, crap videos. There's that fine yeah, minimum that we need to make, make, right? So yes. And you know what the problem is, and this is why I'm encouraging everybody to start, is that fine mi minimum is getting higher. The standards are higher. Yes. Like when we started podcasting seven years ago, the minimum was really low so we you know we we were if you go back and listen to like the wellness guys really are there it, the audio was crap like it was crap we didn't have mics like this it was just you know it was just terrible recording but now if you had to start a podcast now you have to have proper proper cameras proper studio recordings and proper all that because why because they people once they listen to it once they're like this is crap i'm out of here mm -hmm. i'm gone so there the minimum is getting um harder and harder the standards are getting harder and harder but like I said, you're gonna have to start, otherwise you're gonna be that much further behind, which gets to a point of you going not even starting at all, and that's when you're gonna be left behind. Yeah, got it. If someone wants to kind of dive deeper into this kind of personal branding and things they can do, have you got some favorite books or other, you know, what, what, where are you learning this stuff from? You know, to be honest with you, I don't have a, I don't, I haven't really dived into any books at all on this um i'm just consuming content at the moment like i'm just consuming and just watching what people are doing um you know whether it be on youtube i've never been on youtube person until probably just a couple months ago and now i'm just like oh a lot of content here that I can actually, you know, follow and watch. Uh, I think it depends on what kind of style you're looking for. If you, you know, love kind of doing vlogging or and you want to kind of get into that, then you know, guys like Peter McKinnon or Casey Neistat would be a really good starting point to kind of see how they do things. I just really watch and observe. I look at um, a lot of, uh, you know, way, the way content is being built out and where it's moving. Is Gary Vee is a really great person to kind of personality to kind of watch what he's doing and how he's marketing to to um, not really marketing, how he's pushing out content. I think it depends on which channels you're moving towards. I believe what we need to do as chiropractors, we need to kind of keep an eye on what's actually happening and we need to adapt accordingly. And if we don't, if we're not paying attention to the market, then the market is going to shift. Now, five years ago, we probably could have gone away with it. Definitely 10, 20 years ago, we could have gone away with it that, you know, I can just wait and see how this plays out. Nowadays, though, like, if you're not an early adopter, it becomes harder for you to adopt. And people who, you know, video should have been done. I remember doing this like on, this is before iPhones came out. I mean, I was talked about on DG stage on video. It's, there's a, I'm sure there's a DG, DG YouTube video on this. I took out a personal little, um, I don't know, what a personal camera, like, you know, without flip screen. And I used to do that. I did that on stage. I believe that was probably about nine, 10 years ago. I right. And I said, yeah. yeah, you remember that, right? And I said, you need to do videos. I'm still talking the same message, and we're still like riding this way videos, but yet, you know, there's still a challenge with people, you know, shying away from camera. And yet it's all on everybody's phones. It's like, literally, there's no excuse of like, I remember I had to set up like freaking green screens or like lighting and I bought all the lighting in the boxes now and they're all sitting in now because I don't, you don't need that anymore because now all you need is, this, you know, you need a little like a personal device, you, you know, that's about it. And you don't even need a special camera. Like, sure, everybody asks, the first question I always get asked like about videos is like, what, what equipment do you use? Like, honestly, guys, it doesn't freaking matter. Like you're, you're getting so hung up on the tactical, which is um, the video uh, or what camera I use. A better camera is not gonna make you look better, right? Because if you're if you're a crap on video, you're gonna be crap. You're gonna look worse <laughs> with a yeah. the, the special camera. Yeah, like camera just crap. I've never. Uh, yeah, exactly. I did a video with uh, my friend Kale yesterday, and we're just talking about surfing. And I said I never surfed in my. I surfed once in my life. Just bought the best surfboard. Doesn't mean make it me an amazing surfer all of a sudden, right? It just means that I'm gonna get smashed out there and probably break my board the very first time I'm up there. So literally, this is what you really need. You get started on that and um, and just play with it. And it's about learning and growing from that, but it's the willingness to start. And so when it goes go back to the same conversation of like doubling our practice, if you want to double your practice, you need to double down on you. First comes, you need to believe in yourself, right? You need to figure out 
where do you fit in the world of chiropractic? And how do you want to see chiropractic fit into the world of your community? If you can figure that out, and I really honestly think if you want to, like, let's not go tactical here. Let's go a bit more strategic. Strategy-wise, I think, number one, personal branding is key. You need to have a personal brand moving forward if you want to double your practice because people need to know you. If you're unknown, if you're unsearchable, if people can't Google you, you're done. You're dead in the water. I'm not talking about just a website. Like People need to find you elsewhere. Like If I was looking, I found a videographer, just to kind of be good. I found a videographer the other day. I searched up on, I just said, Northern Beaches, Sydney, videographer. And I saw this video. I'm like, wow, this is a really good video. And I looked at that, and it was a kid. I was like, this is awesome. I saw the talent there, and I went, well, wow, let's go search him up. I went on his Facebook page, and guess what? He had a Facebook page, a business page. I'm like, great, let's look at his other videos. Then I went on YouTube, and I searched him there, and saw his other videos, and I was impressed with that. And that's actually had a meeting with him this morning. And so what I'm doing is that, because what I did, I searched him on Google, I searched him on Facebook, and I searched him on YouTube. If I'm doing that to for a potential hire, what do you think your patients are doing? Mm. Your patient's gonna look you up. So what are your patients gonna do? They're gonna look you up on Google. They're gonna search for your name or your practice. They may find your website, but that's not good enough. Because if the, web, the, the website is the only thing that comes up, then they're gonna rely on, they whether trust you or not. But if you are if you search for your name and a whole bunch of things, you're on YouTube, you're on uh, Facebook, and you're also on your website, then all of a sudden, like, hey, this guy is, in a lot of places, which means something to you. It's just like being in a restaurant. If you go to a restaurant, you go for that restaurant, you're not just gonna go to the restaurant website because yeah, maybe like you know, someone could have built a really beautiful website, but I wanna go to TripAdvisor, or I might go on Yelp, or I might go check out on what the reviews are because what other people are saying about you. So personal brand is definitely one, number one from a strategy point of view. Number two, I think is really important when it comes to um, you know doubling your practice is that you gotta get your communication right. If you can't communicate chiropractic out of your head and what's in your heart to the masses, it's not going to work, right? Because people rely on communicating. It's not. It's about influencing people to have a better buying decision. Chiropractic is not hard to understand. We as chiropractors can all agree chiropractic is not that hard to understand. However, public it is because they've never heard of it or they don't understand it. So what we got to do is be able to communicate that message to the public in a way that they can comprehend not from our worldview, from their worldview, okay? which which is a huge difference. We're trying to talk from our worldview. No one cares from our worldview. What they need to what they what they need to understand is their worldview and then start to understand their worldview and pull them towards us. So I think from personal brand communication is really key. The third thing I think is having an efficient practice, which means that you have to have your systems, your team, all of that be congruent to your brand itself. What does it stand for? So how do you start? It's your vision, right? What is the vision that you actually have for your business and your practice and for yourself? What are your values? Those are your key. Those are the values are there like uh, I hope the things that kind of keep you in line, right? The keep that you're gonna you're not gonna cross those boundaries. And the third thing is that what's your vibe? Do you vibe those values in your vision? Because if your practice doesn't vibe that, if it doesn't, you know, if you're talking about this is a beautiful, uh, you know, practice about, you know, the newest technologies and all that stuff. And that's what your vibe and values are. But your practice is like this old thing that hasn't changed in 10 years ago, wooden benches and, and old technology, then that's not the vibe, right? So you want to make sure the vibe matches the, and the vision that you actually have. Now, you notice I didn't say anything about technique because I think, you know, you talked about uh, time wise. I think we spend too much time learning techniques. Now, I'm not suggesting techniques are not a good. Like I think it's really important that we always upgrading our skills and 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 always constantly, um, you know, managing ourselves in that realm and, and continue our CPD there. But the challenge I think is that I think young students, especially, if they they think that the technique is going to change them. They think that by learning a new technique, I'm going to be able to double my practice. By learning a ne- new technique, things will change. Yes, to a point. I think sometimes we learn 10 different techniques, but then we don't even know what we're about anymore. I think it's like learn the minimum that you need, enough tool belts, tools in your belt, and then work and master that. Otherwise, you don't master none. And what I think we need to master more is communication. It's not the technique that will change people's lives. It's the communication and them understanding what we do that's going to affect them overall. So I hope that helps kind of tie things back up to doubling your practice from a strategy point of view. Absolutely. Yeah, wonderful stuff there, Lawrence Tam. Uh, we certainly, obviously, are big advocates for uh, video and uh, it, it teaches that a lot. So we uh, certainly hear you on that uh, on that call. Um, 
Any final words, Lawrence? Where do people find out more about you? What's the best place to go? So, you know, listen, the thing is, I think, well, a lot, a lot, one last piece of advice. Don't fake it. Like, stop trying to buy likes. Stop trying to fake what you're about because people will find out in this day and age. And people will be very, very, you got to be very, very crystal clear that your image needs to be, that's why I'm really big on the alignment because you can be found out very, very quickly moving forward. So number one thing is just be you. Stop trying to be everybody else. And, you know, if you can do that, I think the profession will, will be so much better for it because we need more individuals individuals rather than trying to like have everybody have to come together one place because there's so there's billion people out there they're going to be attracted to the right person i think you and i both agree or all of us will agree that we want clients that we want to see and that are attracted to us so otherwise those clients are very difficult so focus on you be you focus on and creating that system and creating that practice and that vision and everything will come towards you if you want to find out more about me just go check out facebook go to drive your practice type in driver practice you'll find me there wonderful lines i love where this started from which is you know, this concept of why do you want to double in the first place too many people you not just cake practice but we have a whole bunch of natural alternate health practices practitioners that listen to us here you know there's no point doubling your practice if um it's not going to bring ultimately more happiness now if you're wanting to do that then man you've just been given one heck of a roadmap from uh, you know, what videos to, uh, you know, the website, how it needs to look, to branding all the way through there, buddy. So um, I, I love watching what you do. You are an innovator, a leader, um, you're on the cutting edge, um, and it's always such a pleasure to see the direction that you're heading in um, as well. You end up dragging so many of us along. So we'll be sure to link to your info down Thank you, appreciate here. that. So again, get on board, drive your practice. Uh, follow Lawrence Rez. He puts out wonderful content on a weekly basis as well. So, buddy, until next time, thank you so much for sharing so openly and generously with us today. See you, guys. See you, Thanks, mate. Lawrence. Hi, guys. Tony again. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Lawrence Tan. What a great session, future-proofing your practice. Uh, and there was a, certainly a common theme, wasn't there, of making videos. And, look, we've been on about this for a while to future-proof that video is the way of the future. And, in fact, video is the now. So if you're not making videos, you are going to be quickly left behind. Now, we've put together at Adio Media a wonderful course called the Mobile Video Blueprint for Health Professionals. If you haven't seen it, this course holds your hand as you can make videos with nothing other than your mobile device. Going through things such as framing, lighting, audio, giving you a framework of how to structure your videos so that they are engaging, so that they actually have people getting excited to take action and position you as the expert in your community. So if you want to start making videos and you'd like a little hand in that, then jump over to adiomedia.com forward slash mobile. And from there, you'll be able to enter the code LT for Lawrence Tam capital L, capital T, and that code will give you 50% off the mobile video blueprint. So jump over there and get started.